Welcome. My name is Karuna Tirumala. I work at the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center, helping to make tribal health data more accurate and accessible to Northwest tribes. This short video is focused on helping you understand confidence intervals. It is part of a series of videos designed to help staff from tribes and native serving organizations gather and use health data. To see the rest of the videos in the series, visit this link. Okay, let's get started. An important topic to learn about when it comes to interpreting health data is confidence intervals. But before we can talk about confidence intervals, we have to briefly talk about sampling. Sometimes we don't have the ability to get health data from every single person in a group of people. So we take a sample. We try to make sure that the data sample we take is representative of the whole group. Then we use the sample to attempt to understand the whole group. For instance, in this table about rates of those who quit smoking in my state from 2006 through 2010, the data they used to determine the rates was based on a sample. You can use confidence intervals to decide how confident you are that the data represents what is true. For example, if you look at the AIAN rate of 60%, it has two numbers in parentheses to the right of this rate. These two numbers in parentheses separated by a comma is called the confidence interval. Confidence intervals allow you to say that if you pull the sample from the population 100 times, 95 out of those 100 times, the estimate or the rate that you see will be contained somewhere in the confidence interval, the numbers in parentheses. What makes us even more certain in the estimate or the rate that you see is if the confidence interval is smaller. So a range of 50 to 70 is generally better than a range of 30 through 90. Why? There's less room for error. That being said, there are some cases where a rate gives you valuable insight, even if the confidence interval is large. Confidence intervals do not account for other sources of uncertainty in our sample data. For example, sometimes the way the sample was collected was biased, favoring one type of person over another. Or sometimes the data collected from the sample was entered incorrectly into the computer system. So we can't ever say with 100% certainty that the results we got from our sample really truly represents the larger group. That's just life. But looking at confidence intervals and understanding the way that data were collected can help. Keep in mind, if you are ever struggling, consider connecting with the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center or the Tribal Epi Center that serves your region. Tribal epicenters are a great resource when it comes to health data. Not only can they help you with obtaining data, collecting your own data, analyzing and interpreting data, and translating your data into action, they can also help you understand your rights when it comes to health data because tribal epicenters are uniquely able to respond to the needs of tribal and urban Indian communities. You can learn more about text at www tribalepicenters.org. If you are a member of a tribe in the Pacific Northwest and you need data services, contact the Northwest Tech by emailing npaihb at npaihb.org. If you are outside the Pacific Northwest, visit the Tribal Epicenters website to find contact information for the tech director in your region. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. To watch the next video in the series, Click the link shown to the left.